Hi and welcome. I'm your host, Michelle Merchant Johnson with Love Life Coaching, and I'm thrilled and honored to have a returning guest with us today, and that is the amazing Dr. John Gray. Welcome, John. I'm so happy to be with you again. So happy to be with you, and I just can't wait to interview on this topic because I know it's such an important topic and on the minds of so many women out there. And before we jump in, I do want to just give a little formal introduction. I know for so many of you, John is a household name. His uh, most well-known and trusted relationship book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, is listed as one of the top 10 most influential books of the last quarter century. And I was just saying to John before we started, that when I look at his body of work, all of these books behind him and all of the work that he's done in the world, the impact that he's had in the world has been so in tremendous and must be very deeply satisfying. And I know in my own work, in my own relationship, uh, Dr. Gray has made a huge difference and I'm really grateful for you and grateful for that and thankful for the opportunity to interview you again. Dr. Gray's books are translated into approximately 45 languages and more than 100 countries, and it continues to be a, a bestseller, which is really amazing since it came out when? The 90s? Yeah, early 90s. Yeah. And Dr. Gray has written over 20 books. His most recent book is Beyond Mars and Venus. I have that one right here. His Mars Venus book series has forever changed the way men and women view their relationships. And we're going to be talking about some of the things that uh, women are asking me quite frequently in my own work, because I work mainly with single women, usually a little more mature single women, 40, 50 and above, who may have been very successful in life, but have maybe struggled some in the area of relationships. And one of the questions they often ask is, well, they ask questions all the time about men and why men do certain things, but they ask this question about how a man chooses a woman, what makes him want to commit to a woman, what makes him want to stay with a woman or choose a particular woman for their long-term relationship, wife or girlfriend. And so I want to hear your perspective on that, John. Well, I, what comes up in my mind is, <clears throat> and this may not apply fully to men above 50, uh, but it can. All right. It just, I'm remembering myself back when I realized I wanted to get married. All right. First thing is when I, when I, as a younger man, if I can't support myself, I can't think about committing to another woman. And then there's another aspect where a man has low self esteem. This wasn't me, but it's one of my clients. He had low self esteem. He's always telling her, she's saying, I want to get married. It gives me a sense of security. And we could talk more about conversations to motivate motivate a man to say, I'll get married. Because you need to have conversations if he doesn't do it. So that's one thing. And I had a client and they've been together for 10 years and he loved her dearly. And he says, you can find somebody better than me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she says, no, you're the one. And he says, I love you. I don't want to marry you because I feel like you deserve somebody better than me. And this is just understanding male psychology. It's about feeling I can be successful in providing what you need and want. And he just didn't feel he could do that. Now he had his own blocks and securities, but she also had contributed to it. And unknowingly, it was an experience when they were visiting Los Angeles and Beverly Hills, and they were looking at all these mansions. <laughs> and so this is a long time ago, but it's a, there was a movie at the time called The Beverly Hillbillies. And they lived in mansions, these hillbillies. And they were going around these mansions and she was like adoring the, oh my gosh, a swimming pool. Could you imagine having a swimming pool with a diving board, you know, and oh my gosh. So he was watching her feel so happy by looking at all of that. He had this experience that he could never provide that and she deserved better. He loved her so much. So. Now, she didn't know that that had happened. Uh, I had researched asking questions about their life and so forth. And somehow that came up that they, some of the vacations they went on. And I realized that's probably what happened because she really liked those houses. Anyway, so I told her, uh, I'll get him to take you to this movie because the movie was happening at that time. It was the movie, not the TV show, but something about Down and Out Beverly Hills. 
So I said, go to the movie, and when you leave the movie, casually say, you know, those big houses are amazing and beautiful, but I would never really want to live in any of that. I'm just happy with simple life. And a week later, he proposed to her, and, and they got married. Uh, so he just needed a message that he was enough. And it's so much about men is to feel the confidence that I can provide. Now, for me, all in my own experience, here's a younger guy when I wasn't making a lot of money. Actually, I was homeless for a while. I'd been a monk and then I was homeless and then I finally built my career. I didn't want to have children. But as soon as I started wanting to, uh, wanting, making enough money, then suddenly I wanted to have children. And when a man wants to have children, that's often when they're younger, the big motivator to get married. Okay, so there is a place there, which is some men in their 30s and early 40s don't want to get married because they're not yet really feeling good enough to raise a family. And today it's very expensive to raise a family. So those are just some dynamics, just to, some stories that come to my mind. The The reality though, in com having a conversation with men, men are very reasonable. And why get married? You know, you're 50 years old, you're 45 years old, you're beyond the rate, the, the, the time of having children. Now, having said that, uh, every woman has a great conversation she can have with a guy, which is, if we're going to have children, I need to feel secure. And I trust you in my conscious mind, okay? But I have insecurities. We all have insecurities. Safe so to own this. Just say, so you know, I have insecurities. And if we're married, then I feel more secure. Because when you get married, it's more difficult to run away. Because we all have our most difficult times. We have fight or flight, and we can just sort of run away. So in the, it's rather embarrassing if you love your partner and in front of all your friends and your family and the world and you have a divorce and then having to divide everything up by the law, mm -hmm. it's more complicated. And so it's not so easy to just leave. And that makes us, if we love each other, feel the commitment to make it work and do what it takes to make it work. As human beings, we have a tendency to just want to do what's easy. And when you're not getting along, you know, we all have these periods of ups and downs. And at those times, it's inevitable. Then at those times when things are a little challenging or difficult, we just, well, and this is what men do. They think, well, if you're not happy, then why should we have a relationship? And this is understanding men is that a healthy man depends on himself to be happy. A healthy woman depends on herself to be happy. But more so for women, it's, depending upon the conditions of your life, your your home, your children, your friends, your education, uh, your relationships with God, there's a lot of elements that go towards relationships. Those are all relationships that can provide happiness for a woman. A woman's baseline of happiness should come from all of those kinds of relationships, but not dependent on a man. Ideally, she depends on the man to take her to not happy, but happier. It's a real key thing, okay? If you're just going to look to a man to make you happy and he's to be in and end all of your life and you can't live without him, it's going to be a very unhealthy relationship. And and you'll she will come across as needy and neediness will keep him from wanting to marry you. The, the neediness, needing, these are challenging words to understand, but it's needy is saying, I need more and you're not giving it to me. Needing is I'm happy to be with you. I'm enjoying myself. I'm so glad I'm with you. It's it's a joyful response as a, as a message to man that I need you. I miss you, okay? When she says, I miss you, I, I need you. But again, even tone of voice can convey uh, uh, that I miss you and I'm not, I can't live without you. That's not good, okay? It's, it'd be like if you're texting him, you'd say something like, and texting is now a good way of communicating little messages when you're apart. You know, it's just, I miss you. I had the best lunch today with my friend Carol. I had coffee that was like spectacular. I never, it was a latte that was amazing. So you, you have to put it in the context of I miss you, my life is great, as opposed to I miss you and I'm at home alone and nothing to do and nobody cares about me. See, there's a a victim mentality that comes across as I'm not, I can get what I need from you and I'm unhappy as opposed to I'm doing good and I can be better. See, mm -hmm. there's a dynamic there that makes you way more attracted to him. But I'm, I'm coming back to the moment where I, 
I was married before I married Bonnie, and, and then I'm, Bonnie has passed, and now I'm married again. So I know a lot of different stages of, of getting married, but I'll build up to it because they're all important insights to understand men. And please interrupt me if you have questions on any of this, Michelle, as I'm going. Before you go into your story, and I want to hear about your um, experiences because I think it's incredibly valuable, but I just want to put the exclamation point on what you just said about needing and neediness because I think that is something that is so confusing to so many women, John, because we keep hearing this message, men need to feel needed. They need to feel like they have something to offer, to contribute. They need to feel like they can be successful, like you were saying. And yet, then on the other hand, we're like, but you can't be needy. And so the way you described it, it almost felt like, and, and maybe this isn't quite right, so you can uh, correct me if, if there's a nuance to this I'm not getting, but it almost felt like the neediness is coming more from a place of desperation or like shame or guilt, like you're not giving me what I want, I'm all lonely, I'm sad, blah, blah, it's that energy. Whereas the needing is more like, I'm so happy when I'm with you. I'm so excited when we get to do fun things together. Um, you're, you're, you're like that cherry on top of my life, my already good life. And it reminded me of a, an Instagram post that I saw not too long ago. This woman was from France, I believe, and it was at the time of the lockdown of, of COVID. France was locking down. And so she just decided, okay, I'm not going to date now. I'm just going to enjoy my life the best I can during this period of this lockdown. And she went out and she bought like a couple dozen roses and came into her house. And she's just thinking, I'm just going to, you know, enjoy this time for whatever it is. But as she was walking into her apartment building, she saw a guy that lived upstairs. They never really talked before. He smiled. He saw her all happy. She's carrying these flowers. He shows up at her door a few minutes later and brings a bottle of wine and just says, hey, you want to dance with me? They dance, they end up in a romance. So it was like, almost like the mindset was she was going to be joyfully living her life. And she met this guy that was right upstairs. Well, I think everything you described was perfect up to the story. The okay. story is that could have just been a, a one night stand. Right. And that could be a healthy beginning of a relationship as well. You know, there's a, it, it, you know, it can always go either way. <laughs> right, right, right. Sex right away. As you know, my message, Michelle, is always to, don't give it away for free. I mean, you just oh, no. not give it away for free. Uh, when I was just hearing somebody else talking about relationships online, basically this the facts of, of um, 80% of the men online are not being selected by women is 20 percent of the alphas uh that they they look good they have a height they have success that you know above all the other men and they're the women are just not picking them see the women pick the men men sort of say look at my muscles you know look at my house look at my job look what what can i do competence capability uh and, and power power in a con in a positive sense the, the ability to produce results to provide to be strong so protective uh, so this is these are things that women are looking for in men, or at least stimulates hormones of arousal and interest in women. And some women may feel, due to history, I don't want a powerful man. They associate power with ab abusiveness. And that's actually never are powerful men abusive if they're truly powerful. Uh, men only become abusive when they feel insecure. Uh, so some men are very wealthy and very successful, and they're in that 20% market. Uh, they look really good, but inside they are insecure. They have to dominate in order to uh, feel secure within themselves rather than be competent and capable. But anyway, we've got that 20% that look good and they have all these women available to them. So they're, they're so available that they'll never get a, it's hard for them to settle down until they realize a, a bit more maturity that they're really missing something of value in their lives. And so they do get married, some of them, as they get older. But the bottom line is when you have so much choice, it's your brain just wants a new and different, new and different, new and different, and uh, they're never satisfied with just the same woman. So that's that's a challenge today. And, and then you've got uh, all of the women online who can easily uh, get a man by, to a certain extent, by being sexually available. 
but mm-hmm. they're being sexually available to that 20% and therefore those women, <laughs> he's going to go next, next. And, but there is a level of maturity where men start to wake up and realize that they want real love because there's an emptiness that follows that. Uh, that emptiness in, in many men who are successful is is filled by addiction. You know, and by filled, I mean actually avoided. You know, you, you just have an addiction. And addiction to sex and new partners can also prevent him from feeling that void. So I know we're talking about how to get a guy to marry you and talking about what's out there. It's not all that, okay? I counsel men all the time who are successful, one committed relationship. So it does exist. It's usually as they get older, uh, in their 40s or so forth. So that's maturity for men. If you can think about uh, men as they grow older, they get more wisdom. And they just don't have the wisdom before. They're just thinking, what can I get? How do I get it? But as opposed to what can I provide for you and take the time to get to understand her. But having said that, Mars Venus ideas have become so popular around the world because particularly more so with men than women, although it started out with women. But men are at a certain point, they're trying to figure out how can I be successful in a relationship? And I do speak in practical common sense terms of do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Why? But men have to know, but why do this? And see, you'll hear you know, one of the big things that's taught to men is today, women need you to listen. Okay, so you say that to a man, he goes, okay, I listened to her and she was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or I listened for a minute or two and then I gave her this great solution. And also uh, there's more depth that, that they need. So I have to explain to men, and this has been a way to, a woman can understand her value to a man in a, in a sense as well is that when, when a man dates a woman and he provides something that makes her happy, he bonds with her. See, so the whole thing about getting him to marry you is getting him to bond with you. And men don't bond with somebody who gives more to him. So if you cook me a meal and you do everything you think I want, I don't bond with you. I like you, I enjoy that. And then it's like, what else can I get? We don't, want to, it, we don't want to focus too much on giving to men, but we want to focus on giving him the message he's successful in giving to her. And that will be a foundation for me to move into when you ask me the question, what, what, what make what clicks inside of a man to propose and want to get married? So, yeah, and you were about to share your experience. That's the story. I'm telling you when I, why I married Bonnie. So I was married to a woman before Barbara. And Barbara's a wonderful woman, and we were married a couple of years. We dated for a couple of years, and we're learning about relationships. And at that time, I was more, um, uh, you know, I'd been a monk for nine years, so it was all new for me. And I was just sort of learning what everybody was teaching at the time, which was men should be more in touch with their feelings and talk about their feelings. And Barbara was a therapist, and she's always wanting to do therapy on me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I could do this, but it, you, Attraction will die if men move too far to their female side. And that's what happened. I just wasn't attracted to her anymore. And she wasn't attracted to me anymore. But also what happened for us is, practically speaking, I realized now I wanted children and she did more children. So that put a big uh, problem in the relationship. So we, we got divorced. And one of the big problems in our relationship that would show up is we, we used to go to this particular restaurant in LA, which was um, way on the other side of town. And so we'd get in the car and she knew the restaurant. She would give me directions how to get there. So she's saying, turn left here, go right here. So I never really learned, remembered how to get there without her being in the car. Cause I was just so used to her giving me directions on where this place was. There's a tendency, and this is the male tendency. If you give too much to a man or too much direction even, he said, okay, I'll just do that. I'll go with the flow. See, that's a man being on his female side. It's very unattractive. It's attractive in the beginning because you feel like, oh, he's listening to you. But then it's very unattractive that you're not taking charge. And I wasn't taking charge. She was like a real take charge woman. And it was great. She was my personal assistant too. And all this stuff, take charge, do this, do this. I'm like, go with the flow. There's an instinct inside of men, which never do anything you don't have to do. Just the women, you have to understand that. See, you don't have that tendency. You have the tendency to, oh, let me do more. Let me do more. Let me, without being asked, 
you will tend to do more. Now, where does that come from? Well, your whole physiology is wired up to be nurturers for children who can't ask. Mm -hmm. You're always got your antennas up. Okay, what what do we have to do? What do you have to do? What do you have to do here? And Barbara was very on her masculine side as well, like take charge and get, get it done. I was fine with that. In a sense, I could be very lazy. So this efficiency gene in men, which is never do anything you don't have to do, you can also look at it from a woman's point of view. It's lazy. He doesn't do it. <laughs> and, and, and every woman in, in, in her 40s and 50s that been with men, you know this is what happens as men start out gung-ho because it's new, it's different, it raises their dopamine, that raises his testosterone, he moves forward. And then once he's achieved his goal, he relaxes. Okay, I've done it. Now I can go for a vacation, so to speak. And that's his female hormones come into play. We've talked a lot about in our interviews the male hormones and the female hormones. Well, the female hormones is doing what you like, just doing what you like. And so now I'm going to do with my life. I've done the hard stuff. Now I can, in a sense, retire from the relationship <laughs> for having to make the, the do things for her. Now I do the easy stuff. Uh, and, but he still, if he's capable of having a relationship, he has to have a sense of success in his own life where he feels but, you know, I can be happy without depending on a woman. I'm quite capable and I want more. I want a woman in my life to fill that hole. So that void, there's a void that we have without femininity and we need it. Uh, so anyway, so here I am having divorced Barbara, a year to heal. I go back to Bonnie. And by the way, I dated Bonnie before Barbara, but I didn't have a job at the time. So she didn't want to marry me. So it was all a beautiful love story. But anyway, I got to come back to Bonnie and not sure if I wanted to marry or whatever, but I remember the moment that I decided this is the moment I want to marry her. I, I was in love with her and I was taking her to a resort. And at that resort, there was going to be a talk, you know, both like seminars and whatever. So I, I, we were going and it was south of LA and somehow I took the wrong turn and ended up to a sign saying, welcome to Nevada. Okay, Las Vegas. Okay. So <laughs> So I think of the wrong turn. There was no way we're going to get to the lecture. Okay. And, uh, and I absent mind in this while I'm driving, talking, whatever. And so in my previous relationship with Barbara, I was mentioning her needing to give me directions and whatever. The, the other side of that is when I was absent minded while driving, she would get very upset at me. How could you forget? Why can't you do this? Why didn't you do that? So, that was a problem in my first marriage is she'd get upset when I was absent-minded. And that was, I was too far on my female side. It was true. So here I am dating Bonnie and took the wrong turn and I'm already ready for the woman to just be so upset with me. And instead what happened is I pulled the car over when I saw the sign, I said, I think I took the wrong turn and there was no response at all. In my brain, I'm ready for the rejection and the disapproval and how could I do that? It was important to get to that mm -hmm. meeting. And the reaction she had at that moment was, uh, and this is, I'm going way back, so take me a moment to get there. And she, I pulled the car over and, and Bonnie took a deep breath to relax and she just said, I don't know where we are either, but this is the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. And, and I literally wanted to kneel right down there and say, thank you, God, will you marry me? And I didn't, but that's the moment I decided I wanted to marry her. And it was a place of my being vulnerable and her giving me the uh, affirmation that I was a good guy, even though I make mistakes. So that's all just to underline, women don't realize how powerful their approval and acceptance of a man is. Approval and acceptance and you have to watch those times when you're giving him messages directly that he's not good enough, you disapprove, you're upset with him, or watch the indirect messages as in the case of the couple where she was talking about how great it would be to have swimming pool with a diving board and he felt he could never give that to her. So these are two examples of men getting something that's very important to them. So just as a man needs to get what's really important to him to make that commitment, he also needs to get a message from her that this is for the couple that's in love or they're dating and they've been together a while and he's not proposing and you want to have marriage. The obstacle to getting married at that point is men don't logically understand why do I have to do it. Uh, I just 
I mean, it's so much in the, the sort of the male culture. I was just uh, watching an interview with a, a famous comedian and he doesn't get married. He says, what's the point of getting married? I mean, a problem's going to come up. You're going to get a divorce. You're going to lose half your empire. Your life is ruined. I know so many men that are bitter about that and whatever. Uh, so at this, this age, if that's an issue, being very open to a prenup would be wonderful just to know uh, that is very significant because if you're talking about 40s and 50s, he's not only got the logic holding him back of, well, what's the point of it? It's just a piece of paper. Why do I have to have the government control my life? You know, this is between you and me. We love each other. It's a very good logical argument from the male point of view. He needs understanding of the female point of view to motivate him to bridge that gulf and sacrifice his own desire to be independent and free and make that commitment to you. And men have that ability. Okay, we're the ones that go to battle and give up our lives. We just have to know that it's worth it. That's all it is. Our resistance is, is it really worth it? And we have so much negative messages in our culture of divorces where men lose so much. Mm -hmm. That's painful. And so why should I have to take that risk? Because we love each other. So if we both love each other, why can't you trust it will always be there? Why do I have to do the a prenup, for example? Prenup is only, from my point of view, it's a good idea to do if you're beyond the age of having babies and children. I mean, if you have children, uh, you should, you've created a life together and you should be together. And, and when I'm saying these things, it's just my ideas. It doesn't have to always be exact what I'm saying. It's such a, every situation is so unique and different. But the general trend here is you've got a man, he's got children, uh, he's got a, you know, family members, and they're all waiting for his to die and get his money. And so, so if somebody comes along, she's going to get the money. It's, it's just horrible. It, it brings out the worst of people. Uh, and, and now he's got to deal with that. And it'd be so much easier if we just had our own life together and my children aren't going to be upset with me if I marry somebody else. And in many cases, the children are upset, particularly their girls. Boys, if you have boys, they're not as upset. You know, they, they're not feeling so dependent. And some are, uh, particularly if you have a lot of money, they're going to be more dependent on it, ironically. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, people get greedy when there's more money. So this is just human nature. All these dramas and history. So these are all obstacles you have to be aware of. And when a man presents those obstacles in conversation, you say, that's true. And that's true. And that's true. And I see that makes sense. And that's a good idea. You don't want to fight the logic of those ideas. It's good logic. It makes sense. I understand it would be so much easier. And that's your magic word. And marriage is like really important to me. And the reason it's important to me is I need to feel that sense of security that comes from that piece of paper. Yes, that piece of paper. It says to all of our friends, that we're happy and we're fulfilled. For you, having a lot of money, our uh, success in your endeavor is very important to you. I put my books up behind me. I want people to know, look what I've done. Okay, you can trust me. I'm capable, I'm competent, I work hard. I'm someone you can rely on. These are all qualities of masculinity to make us feel loved and important and special. That's my specialness. What's my specialness as a woman? Okay, it's primarily, it's not that I can make all this money and all these things. That's the male side of her. The female side of her is the quality of her relationships. Little girls have always been, you know, this thing, even though they're trying to deny this and push this down for so many women, it's about relationship and love and marriage and ceremony and celebration. And everybody knows I have arrived. I have a man. Uh, the joy it brings me is I have a man. For example, you can, you can bring me flowers on Valentine's Day, and that's great. I love it. You can bring me flowers all the time. I just, that's great. I love it. But on Valentine's Day, if I'm working in an office and you deliver the flower, have someone deliver the flowers to my desk, it's a double bonus. Everybody gets to see that I got flowers for my husband. Okay. It, and it, mm -hmm. it's, it's like a feather in her hat that he did it for her. And it's a feather in his hat that he did it for her. We have to understand the dynamics of this. And so much, and you wanna be proud of your life. You wanna feel you have a beautiful life. You have a beautiful relationship. I'm not being hidden. Uh, I'm not a 
uh, you know, just a companion who for sex, you know, is often uh, a very diminishing feeling that a woman can have uh, because one of the major motivations for a man to have a relationship if it's not to have children, is to have the, the the love that he feels in having sex. Okay, sex is like a doorway for men uh, to feel love. Uh, for women, sex can be can be wonderful if she's in a loving relationship and whatever. Otherwise, she can come. It doesn't matter uh, because she can find love in so many different ways. You have to realize love is it's a feeling we have and it's dependent upon the biology of estrogen. And women typically have 10 times more estrogen than a man. And in the sexual experience, they have 20 times more estrogen than a man. And that's love. That's that feeling of surrender and openness and safety and feeling good, feeling approving, accepting, appreciating. All when you're having positive feelings, your estrogen levels are going very high. And men can't have that experience. Okay, so the only time we have that experience is connecting with a woman whose estrogen levels are going very high. That's why sex is so, so valuable. And, and I'm not saying every man is this way, just most are, okay, most are. There's many men who've given up on sex, they've given up on that, and they're not that motivated to get married. Uh, one of the re I, I ha I'm 71 years old, I have friends, and they're not that motivated to get married, they're all divorced. Not all, some of my friends are divorced. They're not going to get married because they stopped having sex. Uh, you know, they say, John, you're talking about sex all the time. I don't hear about it. There's <laughs> this happening down there for them. Uh, mm -hmm. because particularly as you get older as a man, nothing happens down there or less happens down there quite commonly, unless you have a woman who's loving you. When you have love in your life, a woman appreciating you, you're not know, taking Viagra. You need, a, uh, you need to be in a relationship where someone loves you and then that energy comes back. Uh, so we need women. I mean, that, that that's why men are driven so much by sex is that on a higher level, our soul, we need love. We're here to love and feel joyful and happy and fulfilled and serve and selflessness and be free of our own selfishness. And love helps us to do that. And so men tend to be driven by sex because sex, he feels to say when you're aroused you're fully feeling and when you're feeling then you can feel connected and if you're feeling connected uh to someone who's loving you then your heart opens so we need women to open our hearts uh now not all men know this okay <laughs> this is a lot of self this is introspective of for women to know what men don't even know about themselves and the dynamic there is, and I was mentioning to you, Michelle, finally we finished the with the course with my daughter at MarsVenus.com uh, on understanding men. And one of the subtitles and one of the modules, the online course, is the problem that solves all problems. Now, what's the problem that solves all problems? It's men's need to pull away from being interested in a woman. Okay, he needs to particularly he needs to be independent and find his independence for his testosterone to go up. So if women do too much for him or women spend too much time with him, what comes across is he doesn't get his own independence, time to be separate, time to miss her. Now, my wife right now is in another country. And she says, do you miss me? And I say, well, not yet. <laughs> That's <laughs> not I'm I'm enjoying my, my space with not having to do not having to do anything for anybody, but just doing for myself, okay? So then, but I will miss her soon. And I, when I do that, that it will be off the charge sex again. Uh, not that it wasn't fantastic. You know, it was, I just, I know distance makes the heart grow fonder, particularly for men. And men don't know this about themselves and women don't know it about men. The more she can feel fulfilled, fulfilled through her other relationships and then need him to take her to a higher level and not that needy thing, but just to be able to enjoy him and realize, wow, this is so special to be able to have physical intimacy with someone and share my life with someone and be there for someone. So again, what allows a man to make that commitment? This is all big, big story to analyze that one question, but I think it's a very important one and, and, and people may not know, but I also have a book on, uh, Mars Venus on a date. I think it's right there. It's Mars Venus on a day where my finger's pointing. In there, there's a whole chapter on various words to use uh, 
to communicate your need to have him marry you and give you the ring. And if, if I can encapsulate it, it's you, if he's not doing it and you sense it's not going to happen, and generally as men get older, they don't do it because there's no logical reason to do it. Uh, when younger, you know, when you have children, there's a logical reason, and this is our culture and so forth. But older, it's like, hey, we love each other as long as we're getting along. Why not? That's just weakening to a relationship. Men have to make a commitment. You can't give him that lecture saying you need to make that commitment. Right. <laughs> you can make, as you can talk about yourself, which is when we've made this commitment, and I trust you, but I also have insecurities. And I know that if I don't have marriage, I'll start to close up and I'll always be waiting for a younger woman to come along and sweep you off your feet. And that's my immature irrational fears, but they exist inside of me. We're human beings, we're frail, we're vulnerable. You know, we were, you know, when you see that guy bragging about his Corvette, <laughs> I mean, he's just like a teenager saying, look, I'm still a guy here, you know, it's coming from a place of insecurity. We all have insecurities and doubts and whatever. So we put those forth and, uh, or we do things to ensure that we're not too, too vulnerable to other people. And that's appropriate. We wear clothes, but when we can be fully vulnerable with someone, we take off our clothes, so to speak. And that's very natural. And that's very fulfilling because you feel like I can be myself. But to be that vulnerable for a woman, she needs to feel much safer than a man needs to feel. So you don't understand what it's like. It's like when you drive, you notice that I drive in a different way. It's because I have insecure. I, I'm more aware of what can go wrong. And this is what a woman's brain is plagued by. Is there's is no awareness of everything that can go wrong. Men typically have more dangerous accidents and so forth because they don't anticipate what can go wrong. And if everything's fine now, why do we want to change anything? And so it's up to her to communicate to him in a way which is, you know, I, I know you're not ready to get married. He's given you all the reasons. You're right. I, I can see the logic of that. And then you say, and well, from my side, I just know how good I will feel because I have these insecurities that sort of hold me back and I want to just be able to open up and surrender you know, and 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 I think it would make our relationship so much better. It's something important to me. But I also understand your side of it. And then let it be. Let it sit. Don't say, so when will you give me the ring? So you don't do that. There's a time to do that. <laughs> I've done this many, many times. So I'm, I'm, I want to give you the sense of how to communicate something that's really important to you. When from a man's point of view, he doesn't see any logical reason why to do something that could be a risk for him, you know, which is this idea I covered before, which is how devastating divorce can be and, and so forth and the rules and the logic and how it affects our children and so forth. And his own insecurities, he's been probably married before too. And he saw the woman he loved become somebody else. You know, what happened to the woman I fell in love with? And he has no clear understanding of how he contributed to that. So he can feel powerless. This is most of the case for women, it happens even more so for women, they have no awareness of how they contributed to the problems in past relationships. That's why your classes and courses are so important. Uh, and our website, Maurice Venus, is so important. Uh, because if you leave a relationship and don't see how you contributed to it, and not from the point of view of a bad person, I, it's just like, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize this. Like so many women have told me, Gosh, if I had known what I read in your book or in your class, I wouldn't have, I could have ever done everything differently in that relationship. I just didn't know. And why didn't I know it? Because men and women are different. So giving your partner what's going to work for them is not instinctive. What's instinctive is to give them what works for you. So if, if, if what works for a woman, for example, I know if I give a lot of attention to my partner and do nice things for her, she's going to do nice things for me. Done. And, and that's the golden rule, right? We, it's just such an instinctive thing, which is if I give you what you need, you'll give me what I need. It's a reaction, a reciprocity. But what a woman needs most is not always what a man needs most. So you're giving him what you would want. For example, often one of the mistakes women make in the dating process, and then I do recommend that, that book up there, Mars, Venus on a Date, it's a good book. I talk about all the mistakes women make to break the bonding process, uh, which would be like, let's say you're going out on a date and you're dating and 
you want to create conversation and you know that if a man is asking lots of questions of you and is interested in you, you'll be more interested in him. That's what mom told you. You know, if you want somebody to be interested in you, be interested in them. So you're just following the wrong advice. If you want a man to be interested in him, reveal yourself more and more and he'll be interested in you because you are interesting. But asking him questions about him makes him more interested in himself. Something right. Right. And you know what, John, I had one of these relationships back when I was in my 30s. And this was kind of an on again, off again thing for about a decade. I would have these hours and hours long conversations with this man. And, you know, we shared all kinds of things and had all of these deep conversations. But a lot of it was me asking him questions and really deeply understanding him. And I fell in love with him, but he didn't fall in love with me. He loved talking to me. Yeah, yeah he feels better about himself. He's got an audience. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's my profession. I feel good. I get to talk and talk. But it's not like with my partner, to bond with a woman, a man has to penetrate her. He does that in many different ways. He does that one by listening to her more and seeing who she is and going, gosh, I want more of that in my life. Another one is he does things for you. And you respond to what he does in a way which is better than anybody else in the past, you know, which is, oh, she's delighted by me. Oh, she likes me. Oh, she enjoys hanging out with me. Oh, she's having a good time around me. And I'm part of that. You know, I'm creating the conditions for that to happen. Then he bonds with you. So he bonds by providing. That's the whole thing. He bonds by going inside. And again, that's what the bonding process of, of sex is, is. He goes inside of her, not her going inside of him. So there, there's a real balance there, which is very masculine and feminine, which you want to support as many ways you can. And, you know, we've done other talks about, and, and this is in the Beyond Mars and Venus book you share, showed at the beginning, which I just think is one day will be the classic because it takes us beyond the ideas of men are from Mars, women are from Venus, which are all very, very important to understand. But it's so easy in our modern time for women to get lost on their male side and for men to go too far to their female side. Mm -hmm. And we need to learn how our relationship and communication skills can bring a man back to his male side and help a woman come back more to her female side.